Hello, my name is Ethan Beeman and I'm the Agriculture Education Instructor and FFA Advisor at Rye High School in Rye, Colorado. I'd like to first thank you for the opportunity to apply to the NAAE Ideas Unlimited 2022. I hope you enjoy the idea that I'm presenting to you today. Let's get into it. All right, so to get started, I'd like to introduce you to my program. I teach at Rye High School, which is about 30 miles south of Pueblo, Colorado, right on the face of the Greenhorn Mountain. And to get to Rye High School, you have to take Highway 165. Highway 165 is a pretty windy mountain road with speed limits ranging from 45 to 65 miles an hour. My students drive Highway 165 every single day. And multiple of my students either have jobs or animals that they are moving trailer up and down Highway 165. And it's always been kind of spooky to me. I don't necessarily know outside of Colorado what programs or students are moving. However, I have talked to quite a few Colorado Ag teachers and they, uh, like me, have students moving trailer very often. And it is crucial that I teach them something in the effect of how to properly load a trailer and how to properly move that load. As I was pondering the situation of how to properly and safely load a trailer, I was thinking to myself, how can I possibly present this to my students in a way that is engaging and fun for them, as well as very educational? My philosophy of teaching has always been hands-on. I try to do everything I possibly can with something in the kids' hands where they're actually engaged. So I was thinking, what can I do? And I knew that I cannot take an actual truck and trailer, improperly load it, and give a live demonstration. So I decided I better take this and scale it down. I was at Tractor Supply one day walking around and I saw the little toy trucks. And I immediately thought, man, if I could get a toy truck and trailer and some way to make it move, I can show trailer sway, I'm sure. The treadmill that you see underneath it is my simulated road. And I actually went ahead and purchased this treadmill for our program off of Amazon. I do understand that not every program has the ability to go buy a treadmill for this one unit. But the good news is almost every high school has a weight room with a treadmill. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate how this works right now. As you can see, this is a well-balanced trailer. With my weights, however, if I take them and improperly place them towards the back of that trailer, what we're going to see here is as I go up in speed, we're going to watch how that trailer reacts. For at only two miles an hour, we start to see some major problems. As we kick that up to three, instantly we are losing control of that trailer. If I remove that weight from the improperly placed location, that trailer is going to naturally straighten itself out because it's properly balanced at this point. And I can go ahead and pump this thing up pretty fast. There's four miles an hour right there. There's five miles an hour. And yeah, it's a toy trailer, so it's going to balance quite a bit. But as you can see, it is going to trailer straight at all times when it is properly balanced. So we're going to take a real quick closer look here at the experiment. And I don't know about you, but I know that my administrator loves any opportunity I have to tie what I am teaching to other classes within the school. And this is a great opportunity for that cross curricular instruction with mathematics. They're going to use levels here. They're going to be measuring to see how much difference that weight makes on that trailer, depending on where it is placed. And they're looking for the ideal location where that trailer is going to stay as balanced as possible. And what they should find is about 10 to 15% of the weight of this trailer needs to be on the tongue here. If they get way too far forward, sometimes they'll even go up here and they see, this is gonna lift that front wheel off. When it lifts that front wheel off, they understand they're gonna lose traction here. Then they'll work towards the back and they're gonna put it back to here and they're gonna realize, wow, if it's all the way back, it could potentially even lift the wheels off of the ground. But even that right there, these wheels 
are basically not even touching the ground. Therefore, there is no control there. So they play with that first to find that percentage, the 10 to 15% tongue weight. Then they can go through here and they can see, well, how much is that difference really making when it comes to the truck itself? And they can start either at the front or the back. They can put it back here in the back quarter, measure the height from the bumper to the ground, see how much traction they're really losing. Get a little closer to that middle, see it dropped a little bit, they can see that that's gonna make a difference. Continuing moving forward, balances that truck out nice when it's at 10 to 15% tongue weight. Then you get all the way up here, and I want you to watch the front of the truck here. You can see it hikes it up. And just like the back, if we lose our traction here, same thing happens up here. We lose our traction of our front wheels, you're gonna lose your steering, and you're going to lose the control that you need of all four tires making solid contact with the ground, along with the wheels of your trailer making solid contact to ensure that you have as much traction to control that trailer as possible. Once my students have learned the basics of 10 to 15% tongue weight, then I put it to them that they need to teach their community, not just themselves, because this is something that everyone can use. You don't have to be a student within my program for this to be important to you. So what I have them do is they go ahead and they create a PSA. And I'm talking those PSAs from the 1970s that we've all seen where the guy is up on top of a ladder, ladder falls, very dramatic music, um, dramatic visuals, and then it has some tagline at the end. And what they have to do is they videotape this whole thing. And while they're doing it, some of their acting is inside of a truck of their own where they're actually faking driving and then they pan to the outside of the truck and they use a green screen. And that green screen is just a piece of cardboard that we have spray painted green. And they get the borders all covered and they videotape. Then they take what they have videotaped, all of the lines that they have written, the script, and they compile them into iVideo. Any computer has some sort of video editing preloaded into it that has a green screen capability. They put those videos in, they go and they look for free use, background music, dramatic crashing sounds, um, dramatic music that they feed into this one video that must be 30 to 45 seconds long. And that video needs to look like a 70s PSA. They take that video, they put it on the internet, put it on our chapter's Facebook, so everyone in the community that follows us can see what the students have learned, as well as learn from those students of how to properly balance a trailer. When I first started this lesson right here, I did it with the sole intention of helping my students be safe on the road. But it has morphed into something so much bigger than that. Yeah, this is about a one week unit that I teach. Introduce it on Monday, let them play with it, see what I want them to learn. Tuesday, I introduce those PSAs to them and I say, hey, you're gonna create one of these. The rest of Tuesday and Wednesday, they're recording. Thursday, they come into class and they start to edit. And by Monday, we're on a four day week, that video is complete and they turn it into me. With that, it gives an opportunity to those students that might not be the most mechanically inclined where they get to show their skills in my program, but they're more technologically inclined, more computer savvy. They get to show me those skills of how they use computers, how they edit, how they understand how that works. And those that are more mechanically inclined right away jump in here and they learn what I want them to. And they teach the rest of the class and once it all comes together, it creates one really nice product that my community loves to see. As we observe this trailer that is properly loaded, properly balanced, and we see what I eventually want my students to learn, I just really want to take an opportunity to say thank you again for the opportunity to apply for the NAAE Ideas Unlimited 22. And I look very forward to hearing how it all turns out, as well as seeing the other ideas from around the country. Thank you so much for the opportunity. We'll be seeing you.